Welcome back, friends. If you're anything like the majority of people on the North American continent, you are probably paying at least tangential attention to what's happening in the United States on this day, November the 5th. Of course, it's an election day. We won't know the results of this election for some time to come, but there's a lot of trepidation, uncertainty, for some maybe even anticipation. Let me be clear that no matter what happens, God is with us because there have been countless events occur in the life of First St. Andrews and the life of you as an individual that you could not have anticipated and which, quite frankly, you would have rather not happened. But through it all, we do trust God is with us. God is with us in the messiness of our life and in the messiness of this world that we have played a part in creating. That's kind of what I was trying to allude to on Sunday when I was reflecting on the beautiful song by Leonard Cohen, Hallelujah, which is inspired by the messiness of biblical narratives like that which we read from 2 Samuel. We have this baffled king, David, who composes, let us say, a variety of hallelujahs, to borrow Leonard Cohen's phrase, and who engages in behaviors that we find detestable with good reason. Behaviors which in no way are condoned by the biblical prophetic tradition, but which nevertheless David engages in and we are horrified by, but we're supposed to, I think, and this is Cohen's insight, we are supposed to identify with the limitations of these characters because very often they resonate with the deeper recesses of our own life, our failings, our misgivings, our missteps, times when we've been complicit, if not outright supportive, of initiatives or beliefs or practices that have caused harm to others. You know, if you're anything like me, I don't like to dwell on those times, occasions when I've caused harm. I don't set out ever to cause harm, but I know that some of my actions, some of my statements, some of my practices, some of my beliefs in my life have caused harm. Now I've become sensitized to that, I've become attuned, and I try my best to practice in such a way that I'm made aware of the effects, or at least some of the effects of what I say and do. But we can't ever be fully aware, and so there's always room to grow, and I think it should produce a certain humility in us, like it did in David later in the text. You see, for Cohen, there's a vulnerability about the human experience that we can't escape from, and he captured that in his music. I coupled Cohen's hallelujah, or hallelujahs, in plural, with the concept of hedonism, which is a school of thought in sort of ancient Greek society that said humans should pursue that which gives them pleasure, first and foremost. And if they did that, and made an effort to do that, that they could not only uh, mitigate the unpleasurable experiences of their life, but that it would be a collective good. Now, I think some of us sort of default to that. We pursue what we like, we purchase what we like, we seek out what we like. That guides us in much of our daily activities. But if that was our soul, or maybe even most important guiding principle, I can't help but wonder what kinds of harm may be caused to others in our singular pursuit of selfish pleasure. That's what I think one of the takeaways from the story of David is. David sees something, engages in a transgressive act, a terrible act, and causes harm to his whole community. Not only to Bathsheba, the woman to whom the harm was caused directly, but also to Uriah, her husband, as well as to David. You see, the blood and the, the sin is sitting there on David for the remainder of his life. And I think the consequences of our actions long outlive the act itself. But it's important for us to take responsibility, to be appropriately humbled, not full of shame for the rest of our life, but to be humbled and know that but for grace go we into this world. Here at First St. Andrews United, we desperately cling to that grace that we need and that the whole world needs. And we try to embody that grace in our relationship with others.
my hope from my meditation this last Sunday, but also for all that we do going forward, is that we would be reminded of that need for grace, not only our need, but the world's need, and that we might be hands and feet, hearts and minds full of grace and compassion for this world, which will only need that grace more and more, I believe, in the days and weeks and months to come. So take heart. You are here. We are here for purpose. We are here to be a healing balm. And uh, I'm comforted by that and hope you are as well. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for joining me today. Mm -hmm.